I'm sure it's getting sound. I sure hope it is. All right, photosynthesis, the second process. And the second process, um, this occurs in the chloroplast, which we already talked about, it occurs in autotrophic organisms, so that means organisms that create their own food. Uh, and um, we already know the reactants and the products, so right now all we're going to do is really put where they need to be, talk about the inputs and outputs, and the phosphorylation that occurs here, because phosphorylation has to occur. Okay? Um, when we look at photosynthesis, there are two types of reactions. There's light-dependent, and there's light-independent reactions. So there's light-dependent reactions, there's light-independent reactions. What does the term light-dependent mean? What does dependent mean? You need it. In order for the light-dependent reactions to take place, you're going to need light. Yeah, you're going to need light because there are light-dependent reactions, okay? Light-independent reactions don't need light. They're, they occur whether light's available or not. So the only time these reactions here occur are when there's light available. The only time these reactions occur is all the time because they don't need light or they can work during light as well. In your text and in the notes, it mentions where these light-dependent reactions take place. They take place in the thylakoid membranes, which are these structures right here. These structures right here, I reference them as green pancakes, but that's because that's what they look like to me. Each of these is one of these here. And photosynthesis occurs in each of these. So there's a bunch of photosynthesis that takes place here, the light-dependent reactions. Okay? Thylakoid membranes, it also talks about the tubes that connect them. So that's mentioned in your notes in your anatomy as well as you go over um, this, the chloroplast. Then the light independent reactions, also called the Calvin cycle with the capital C because they were named after the dude who, who found them out, who discovered them, or discovered that they were taking place. Those occur in the stroma, which is any part of the chloroplast that's not the thylakoids. Okay? Oftentimes it's referenced as the open space because that's technically what it is. So it's like the cytoplasm of inside that chloroplast. But that's why there's nothing drawn here because it happens in this open space. So this specifically happens in the thylakoids. This happens in the open space. I have my arrows already drawn so that you can see that this is a continuous cycle. Okay? So in photosynthesis, the first ones, the light dependent reactions. In order for the light dependent reactions to occur, what's one of the things that I'm for sure going to need? I'm going to for sure need light. Okay, I'm going to for sure need light. So that's my ATP from the sunlight. Okay, what else do we know that plants take in? We know that they take in carbon dioxide, and that's actually going to be one of the inputs here. What else do we know that they take in? Water. Those are all the reactants. Okay? In the light-dependent reactions, we have our water and our light coming in. Our products for just the light-dependent reactions are going to be oxygen, ATP and NADPH. <clears throat> Was water oxidized or reduced? Was water oxidized or reduced? How do you know it's oxidized? It got smaller. It got smaller. That is for sure the answer. That is the right answer. And those electrons that were released by that water, guess who picked them up? The electron carrier, which was NADP, and it picked up those electrons. So it became NADPH. All right? And right here I have molecule of ATP. So what do we know had to occur here? 
phosphorylation. Yes. And I'm going to I'm just going to draw this arrow to not even I'm not even going to put an arrow because it's not an output. I just want you to see what type of phosphorylation it is. So we know it's phosphorylation. But we call it photophosphorylation. Do you know why we call it photo? It is photosynthesis. What does photo mean? Light. This phosphorylation took place because we had light. Okay? So we have substrate level phosphorylation. We have oxidative phosphorylation. And all it means is we're making ATP, but it's telling you how we're making that ATP. And here we have photophosphorylation. Okay? So we're using light to create that ATP. All right? Then, so all the light-dependent reactions, and, and there's a series of steps, and those um, are carried out. You don't need to know them in detail. You do need to understand how the NADPH is generated. There's like that zigzag, and I mentioned that in the lecture, the long lecture, okay, and how the sunlight hits photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Those are discussed in the lecture too. But photosystem 2 and photosystem 1, there's one of them in each thylakoid. So each thylakoid has photosystems and photosystems are integral proteins. So they go all the way through each of those lipid bilayers there. Okay? And I put the two first because literally that's how they're organized and if you've watched the lecture you already know this. But there are two photosystems. Photosystem 1 was discovered first. So that's why we call it photosystem one. Well, then years later, they discover photosystem two. And it turns out that the steps in photosystem two have to come before the steps in photosystem one. So I intentionally wrote two and one here because two actually comes first. It was just discovered second. Okay? So those photosystems, they take those electrons and they generate them, or they, they crack them down in order to uh, reduce NADP into NADPH. So this electron carrier can carry that. And that is discussed there. It also talks about the two pigments you need to be familiar with, chlorophyll and carotene. So chlorophyll is the green, there's chlorophyll A and B, and carotene is a orangish, yellowish, reddish pigment. Okay, make sure you're familiar with those and you'll definitely need to know those for lab tomorrow. Okay. But big picture, water comes in, light comes in, and it lyses that water, and the term used there and in your notes is photolysis. So photo means light, lysis means that it's breaking or tearing. or break. So photolysis, we're using light to break the water. We're releasing that oxygen, and then those electrons that are left there are picked up by my electron carrier. The ATP that's generated here or phosphorylated is phosphorylated as a result of light, so we call it photophosphorylation. In step two, the Calvin cycle or the light independent reactions, those occur whether there's sunlight or not. Carbon dioxide comes in, glucose is released, ADP and NADP are also released. Was carbon dioxide oxidized or reduced? It was reduced, and we know it was reduced because it got bigger. So water was oxidized, carbon dioxide was reduced. So together this is a redox reaction. Oxidation and reduction are occurring. That also happened in cellular respiration. I'm not going to reference it right now, but it happens in both. These are both considered redox reactions because something is being oxidized and something is being reduced. Okay, so I have carbon dioxide going in. Do I have light coming in here? No, because these are the light independent reactions. All right, but I do have ATP and NADPH coming in. And what do I have coming out? I have glucose and I have ADP and NADP. So I use that ATP I use that energy and I grab that electron so that I could reduce glucose. 
this technically spins around six times. Okay, it spins around six times. And again, I cover that in the long lecture too. You need to know G3, P, P, G3. Um, and that's mentioned in the notes as well. That's just telling you big picture how the glucose is formed because this goes, or BPG, not PG3, BPG, how it continues to cycle around, okay? I use, and I've told you this entire semester so far, I use the arrows to help me figure out what's going on. You need to be able to explain this to someone. When you can explain what's happening to someone, you know it enough to answer the test questions. I'm just telling you honestly. So I would start off with the fact that the light dependent reactions, I know what's going in. I have light coming in and water coming in. I know what the, the, react, or the uh, products are. Oxygen, ATP, and NADPH are being released. The arrows tell me that. Okay, this ATP is phosphorylated using light, so we reference it as photophosphorylation. And the light independent reactions that don't require sunlight, I have ATP and NADPH going in along with carbon dioxide. Coming out, I have glucose, but also ADP and NADP because this has been oxidized. I pulled those electrons off. I have these arrows here going in the cyclic uh, motion because it continues just to cycle through over and over and over again. Okay? Cranking out both oxygen and glucose, which we knew were our products to begin with, and our inputs are my sunlight, or my ATP, my water, and my oxygen. You do need to know the details of light independent and light dependent reactions taking place in the chloroplast, okay? Again, if it's a prokaryotic organism, both of these processes are carried out by its cell membrane. If it's prokaryotic, what's the only thing on Earth that's prokaryotic? Bacteria, non-negotiable. What questions do you have? The more complex process is this one. If you can get this one, then this one comes easy, which is why I teach this one first. Because I teach you the hard things, and then you're like, oh my gosh, that's crazy hard. And then it ends like this, okay? Four steps in cellular respiration, two in photosynthesis that you need to be familiar with. Know the inputs, the outputs, the location and the conditions. Um, review those lectures, the long lectures, please. I think that's it for me, unless you have questions. All right, very well. It is gonna show up in two links because they won't put the, I don't edit these to put them together, so one is shorter than the other. Have a good